Welcome to the Answers for Elders radio show. Meet the trusted experts who will give you straight answers and will help guide you on the path of later life care. Now, here's your host, founder, caregiver, and CEO, Suzanne Newman. And welcome back, everyone, to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And we are here with Stephen Waltar, estate planning attorney, as we are talking about financial wellness. Do you have your ducks in a row? Are you preparing for the future? And um, obviously, Steve is here to share a lot of his uh, wisdom. And obviously, in our first segment, Steve, we talked about documentation. And I think those documents are important no matter what age you're at. Like you said, your 18-year-old, minute you become an adult, you should have some sort of a document that says, hey, if I have a car accident and I'm unconscious and I can't act for myself, someone needs to be that. Um, advocate on my behalf. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the financial piece. Obviously, you work with people that have assets a lot. Um, what, in your experience, um, what are kind of your rules, quote unquote, for investing? <laughs> well, I can give you horror stories. Like when we talk about someone coming in for review, frequently their assets like have gone up or they've doubled, but every once in a while they would go down. And maybe yeah. the, the husband was day trading or the advisor put them in annuities. So I really care about trusts and, and estates work when they're, you, the, the design of the estate plan is there mm -hmm. and when the assets are properly managed. Mm -hmm. So I've got four simple rules and I kind of evaluate everything I look at. You know, first thing is you got to be invested and invested in stocks and bonds, right? You can't just mm -hmm. have CDs. You have to have a stock portfolio. Or you're not going to keep up with inflation. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, the second thing is you need to be diversified. And sometimes people think having accounts at Merrill Lynch or, I mean, four different accounts, four different banks, a couple of CDs, they think that's diversity. It's not. So we like to test it. We can actually kind of analyze the portfolio and see how diverse it is. U.S. Mm -hmm. stocks, funds, big, low, you know, um, small cap, large cap, whatever. Third rule is rebalance. And this is where most people don't do it. So the market goes up and down. We know that happens. It's really nice to have a system that automatically rebalances at least quarterly. And then when it gets out of its parameters, whatever the design mm -hmm. is, different people should be in, you know, a little bit more risky or a little bit more safe, you know. Mm -hmm. But when it gets out of that, then you are actually buying when the market is low. Right. And you're right. selling when the market is high. And the right. last one is just to look at fees. Fees is not the only thing that matters, but you should look at it because sometimes people are paying way more than they ought to. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, they're in a position, obviously, to save and to invest um, a percentage of their rev their income, whatever that does. What if, what if that person is, you know, a low income senior? There's someone that obviously doesn't have additional um, resources to put forward. What would you recommend in that case? Yeah, I know. It's so easy to talk about invest, you know, when you're young and do matching when you're at the company. Mm -hmm. but when someone's beyond all their their years of earning and they're just trying to make it, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there is kind of, it's it's usually managing spending is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. have to just decide what, what you need versus what you want. Right. And, you know, sometimes that takes a little coaching or accountability. Mm -hmm. You can't have everything. You know, right. most people don't want to be a burden on their children or on their loved ones. Right. Right. And, you know, when you say that, um, there are all kinds of benefit programs, you know, if someone's younger and a lot of times they don't take advantage of a 401k or anything like that. Um, uh, you know, I look at, you know, when I was in the corporate world, it was amazing how just a little bit, every paycheck went into a 401k and then it grew. Um, obviously when you're talking about that, how often do you think people really pay attention, um, to doing things like that on a regular basis? Would you say that that's common? Would you say it's probably not as common as what people think? You know, not every firm has a 401k plan. Right. Not every business has that. There used to be a lot of pensions. They don't exist very much anymore. Right. So, I mean, I see a lot of people that invest in their 401k. Mm -hmm. They're the sort of people that come to me. And it's amazing with the, the compounding effect. I mean, that's yeah. just, you do that early and it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say 
even in the later stages of life, you know, people don't want to be risky. I get that. But if all they do is stay at a bank, they're losing money. Right. Sometimes you can manage a CD so you're about breaking even. But mm -hmm. you know, as long as you have at least a two year window of investment, you probably want some blend of stocks and bonds. Sure. It's not very risky, but gives you a chance to get some market return. Right. Uh, because otherwise you're just going to keep spending and you're going right. to run out. So right. yeah, you look at your your programs, you look at any um, services in the community. That's a great idea. There's discounts in for like the home taxes. If you're uh, in yeah. the state of Washington, if your income is low enough, then you can get like a senior discount on your mm -hmm. property taxes, which is huge here. Absolutely. And, you know, there's some amazing programs. And then finally, obviously, if you re you need care, there are financial resources out there that we can just touch on. Um, number one, if you're a veteran, um, obviously there's a special program um, to, and you have to serve what one day in wartime. Is that it? Um, Steve only um, yeah. to qualify. And then you have to meet, I believe two of seven of the activities of daily uh, living needs is I, am I correct on that? I want yeah, to, I, I used to be certified with the veterans administration for aid and attendance and I've let that lapse, but yeah, yeah I served during a period of war and then mm -hmm. there's a lot of qualifying. It's mm -hmm. very nice to get it. Cause it's, it's, it's a monetary, I mean, it's, it's cash. Yeah. So it's a great benefit. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there are, it's become a little bit more complicated, but there's still a great benefit there to go mm -hmm. after. Yeah. And I know that there's also veterans disability. If you had an injury in uh, the military, um, I I don't think even need you, you need to have served in wartime to get that uh, disability um, for veterans. I'm not sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that you don't. If you're injured during training camp or whatever, or not training, but boot camp, um, something like that, I I believe you still can qualify for that benefit for a disability. Usually people qualify for that very soon before they even leave the military. Right. So usually will be fairly easy to mm -hmm. keep going. Yeah. And then obviously the last thing we talk about is um, uh, Medicaid. Um, as a senior uh, needs help, they run out of assets, they can qualify for Medicaid in a program called COPES. And I don't remember what COPES stands for, but that's another option, is it not? Yeah, I think as like community outreach program, things like that. So Medicaid is like in an institution, COPES is uh -huh. like while you're at home, still providing uh -huh. some of the same needs. And it's a little easier for a couple to qualify than a single, but it, you know, there are rules. And mm -hmm. it's a it's a federal program administered in all 50 states. Yeah. So, Steve, you are an estate planning attorney in Bellevue, Washington. Um, but would you um, give us an information? You're part of what's called the Academy of State Planning Attorneys. Um, so for those of, uh, you know, of you listeners that are outside of the state of Washington, how do you find how do they find someone like you through the yeah. Academy? Yeah, so I'm a member of the American Academy of Estate Planning Attorneys, and we're in like 48 of the 50 states. So you just go to aaepa.com, mm -hmm. aaepa.com, mm -hmm. and you can like find put in your state, and you can find attorneys. And these are people really well trained. You know, the academy uh -huh. requires more than double the state of Washington's continuing uh -huh. education. So you've got really well educated people that want to serve the community with the state Perfect. planning. Yes. And Steve, he can be reached in the state of Washington at www.waltar.com. And Steve, you and I, we're going to be right back right after this. Answers for Elders thanks you for watching The Vitality Revolution. Discover a blueprint to find a whole new gear in life, new awareness, and greater potential. Subscribe and be a part of our community. Answers for Elders is the North Star of navigating senior care, featuring content to help later life go a lot easier.